magnetic fields are a type of force field. The field denotes the area in which the non-contact force of permanent magnets or current-carrying conductors can exert their influence. The magnetic field of bar magnets is concentrated mainly at the ends or poles. Convention states that the arrows show the direction in which a small north pole would move if placed at that point. Stronger forces are denoted by an increased density of field lines. The magnetic field around a bar magnet is not uniform. One cannot define magnetic field strength as force per unit magnetic pole, as is possible with gravitational or electric fields, because magnetic poles always exist in pairs. A different approach is therefore necessary to define it. At the beginning of the 19th century, Oersted discovered that the magnetic field around a current carrying conductor is circular. Maxwell formulated a rule to tell us the direction of these field lines. It's commonly referred to as the corkscrew rule, as the lines are in the direction one would turn a corkscrew pointing in the direction of the current. Another way of remembering this direction is the right-hand grip rule. If the right hand is held so that the thumb follows the direction of the current, the tips of the fingers will point in the direction of the field lines around a current-carrying conductor. The magnetic field of a solenoid is similar to that of a bar magnet, so we can say that it has poles. The current flows clockwise at the south pole and anticlockwise at the north. When considering magnetic field strength instead of discussing the force on a magnetic pole, the force on a current carrying conductor is used. When placed in a magnetic field, a current carrying conductor experiences a force due to the interaction between the two magnetic fields. The force on a conductor is always perpendicular to the plane containing the conductor and the direction of the field in which it is placed. Quantitatively, Magnetic field strength is called magnetic flux density. This tells us the force acting per unit current in a wire of unit length at right angles to the field. The unit of magnetic flux density is the Tesla. Only component X of the wire's length experiences the maximum force. Basic trigonometry is used to calculate this length. The direction of the force can be easily deduced using Fleming's left-hand rule. If two of the fingers are lined up in the direction of the two quantities of which the direction is known, the direction of the third quantity is indicated by the remaining digit. It is important that the second finger is pointed in the direction of conventional rather than actual current. Charges moving through magnetic fields which are perpendicular to the direction of their travel also experience a force. This is because moving charge is current, which thanks to the work of Oersted, we know to have a magnetic effect. Fleming's left-hand rule can be used to find the direction of the force on a moving charge. The force on a moving charge is given by the formula F equals BQV. If the charge's motion is not perpendicular to the field, F equals BQV sine theta. Because the force on a moving charge in a magnetic field is always perpendicular to the velocity, the charge will follow a circular path. The radius of the charge's circle can therefore be calculated using this formula. Magnetic flux is different to magnetic flux density. 
The field lines drawn around a magnet represent the magnetic flux flowing from the north to the south pole. Magnetic flux tells us the number of flux lines there are, whereas magnetic flux density tells us the number of flux lines there are per unit area. It is therefore valid to say that magnetic flux is the product of magnetic flux density and area when the flux is at 90 degrees to the area. The unit of magnetic flux is the Weber. When a wire cuts across the flux lines of a magnet, the flux lines link it by flowing through it. This is known as flux linkage. Moving into or out of the field changes the flux linkage and induces a current. If a coil has more than one turn, the flux through the whole coil is equal to the sum of the flux of the individual turns. When flux lines are cut by a conductor, an EMF is induced which will cause a current to flow. Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced EMF opposes the change that caused it. This is a perfect example of the principle of conservation of energy. The current induced in the wire sets up a force on the magnet which must be overcome by the magnet's mover. The work done in moving the magnet therefore provides the electrical energy of the current. A current is only induced when there is a change in the amount of flux linking a coil. Because a conductor is not always part of a complete circuit, the induced current cannot always simply flow. Instead, the negative charge collects at one end of the conductor, leaving the other end positively charged. A potential difference has been established across the ends of the conductor, making it a source of electrical energy. We say that an EMF has been induced. An EMF is induced when flux lines are cut by a moving conductor. Faraday's law states that the magnitude of the induced EMF in a conductor is proportional to the rate at which the magnetic flux is cut by the conductor. Factors which affect the magnitude of the induced EMF are the strength of the magnet, the number and proximity of the coils on the solenoid, and the speed with which the flux lines are cut. Increasing the magnitude of any or all of these factors will increase the magnitude of the induced EMF.
Electromagnetic induction is widely used to generate electricity. An AC generator is essentially a rectangular coil placed between the poles of a horseshoe magnet. Each end of the coil is connected to a slip ring. Contact brushes pressed against the slip rings ensure continuous contact between the alternator coil and the rest of the circuit. If the coil turns at a steady rate, the flux through the coil is continually changing. There is therefore an alternating EMF across the terminals. The induced EMF is at a peak when the sides of the coil cut right across the field lines as in diagrams A and C. In diagrams B and D, when the sides of the coil are parallel to the field lines, the induced EMF is zero. Apart from generation of electricity, there are many other applications of electromagnetic induction. One of the most common of these is in transformers, which are a fundamental component of the national grid. Transformers are used for stepping up or stepping down alternating voltages. They are made of two coils around a soft iron core. An alternating current in the primary coil produces a changing magnetic field, which induces an EMF in the secondary coil. Transformers only work with AC power supplies because the alternating current is equivalent to moving a bar magnet repeatedly in and out of a coil.